good morning all welcome to today's session the department of library and information science christ college autonomous irunyalakuda in association with the department of library and information science university of calicut has planned to organize a national level webinar series on intellectual property rights and today we have the first session of the series the topic for the day is an overview and legal issues of ipr and we have with us uh, to handle the session dr sorry advocate binoy k kadavan from high court of kerala so uh, i welcome you all to today's session and i also would like to invite ms sajida k r coordinator the department of library and information science to welcome the gathering over to you ms sajida k r ഹാപ്പി <laughs> 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 University of Calicut dear colleagues and all other respected participants mm -hmm. it gave me immense pleasure in welcome welcoming all of you to the webinar on ipr webinar is organized department of library and information science christ college in association with department of library and information science university of calicut first of all i would like to welcome our respected principal dr father jolly andrews welcome father in next our collaborator dr mohammed hanifa hod department of library and information science university of calicut hearty welcome sir our chief guest advocate vinoy k kadavan is present here i wish hearty welcome to you sir this this seminar has been organized to discuss many more issues on legal aspects of ipr which may help all the students and researchers once again i wish you welcome all thank you. thank you all thank you thank mrs you. sajida kr moving, moving on let me have let the me pleasure, have pleasure of inviting rabra father dr jolly andrews cmi for the presidential address uh, hope that father. you can all yeah hope that you can hear me and uh, uh, see me yes father thank you dr muhammad dr k m hanifa from the hod of the department of a university the resource person of the day advocate binoy k kadavan who will be the honorable the advocate from the high court of kerala the staff members from that is from the university of calicut who have tied up with us in order to have this intellectual property right webinar plan my dear staff members and students i'm very happy to note that today with the active support and the collaboration and association with the department of library and information science of the university of calicut The Christ College in Yalakuda today is hosting a webinar on intellectual property rights, which is very very important. A well-known resource person at the gate, Binoy K. Kadavan, will be speaking to us. We need to be familiar with the rights, duties, responsibilities, as well as the intellectual. properties as well as the patents etc are concerned we should be well versed with the rules and the regulations regarding criticism when we are actually involving ourselves in active research these fundamental things have to be in our mind 
so i place my special appreciation towards the department of library and information science hachori sajida ms nimida the faculty members of our college i think for the cp will be also here our ugc librarian i also place my special thanks to ms dr k m anifa and all of the faculty members of the university of calicut who is always supporting us my special thanks to ms vinoy k kanavan who is sparing his valuable time for this webinar i think it is almost full we have around 9900 participants in our itself have a wonderful time thank you thank you so much thank you father next i would like to invite dr mohammad hanifa k hod of library and information science university of calicut to introduce the topic as well as resource person for us uh, good morning most uh, respected the principal of uh, christ college dr jolly andrews respected resource person advocate uh, binoy k kadavan my colleague uh, professor vasudevan shrimati sajitha hod of the department of library and information science christ college dr shamli assistant professor department of library and information science university of calicut ms nimida assistant professor and uh, dear participants of this uh, webinar and my dear students i am pleased to welcome all of you again to this uh, national webinar on legal issues of intellectual property rights organized by the department of library and information science university of calicut and department of library and information science christ college autonomous irinalakuda as you know the father mentioned intellectual property rights are the rights given to persons over the creations of their minds they usually give the creator an exclusive right over the use of his her creation for a certain period of time at the same time they also entitle him or her to prevent others from using or dealing or tampering with his or product without uh, prior permission from him or her however uh, the impact of uh, ipr in india is uh, limited uh, and uh, currently faces uh, many challenges violations are rife because of uh, poor uh, enforcement of rights and court cases that could run on for years this has led the government of india to take steps to enhance uh, the ipr regime in the country in 2016 it approved the national intellectual property rights policy the aims to increase awareness stimulate the creation of ipr ensure strong and effective ipr laws redressal and modernization of ipr administration and many things so protecting ipr can be a tough uh, uh, task in india where awareness is low and enforcement is weak but uh, protecting our patents trademarks and copyrights are vital for innovation and uh, development of uh, our innovative ideas uh, and their protection however even with rapid progress on the industrial scientific and economic front we lag behind uh, uh, in many countries so good ipr protection will foster a culture of creativity and innovation today we are privileged to have a very eminent resource person advocate binoy ke kalavan to discuss the legal issues in intellectual property rights advocate binoy is specialized in the field of intellectual property laws cyber laws media and technology law he took his llb and llm from his school of legal studies Kochin University of uh, Science and Technology with first rank and gold medal. 
and he was the recipient of national level scholarship awarded by ministry of commerce government of india for pursuing ipr at llm level he was the resource person for training the program for ir court judges conducted by kerala judicial academy and he has been a resource person for various training programs organized by industry organizations business schools universities and premier institutions like iam or uh, national law school in the law institute etc and he is the youngest person to be nominated to the advisory panel on the ipr of kerala state council for science and environment a kerala government initiative for framing policies and provide training on ipr in kerala he has published a book on study on test data protection in india and he has published many research papers and various articles on ipr issues in legal journals magazines and dailies so we extend a very warm welcome again to you to this uh, webinar we are extremely thankful to you for accepting our request for the invited talk i hope that the webinar will be a valuable opportunity for the participants to understand the legal issues of uh, ipr and to the, uh, to dear participants to get the best connection possible you are requested to keep your microphone on mute and video off when you are not speaking you can enter your questions and comments in the chat box throughout the presentation with that i ask that you give your full attention to advocate binoy and help me in welcoming him to the webinar binoy sir please thank you thank you very much so very warm uh, good morning to you all respected principal of christ college autonomous dr hanifa hod department of uh, library science calicut university madam sajida all the faculty members supporting staff and my dear students i'm really thankful and really place my words of appreciation towards the organizers of this program because the i think one of the role of intellectual property rights in the academic era or academic arena is to be highlighted and understood in its proper and comprehensive manner because it is always a validation process towards the education whether you're working in any subjects in science arts commerce humanities whatever it may be the knowledge of intellectual property rights is a prerequisite in the way of growth and way of acquiring knowledge and way of sustenance at a competitive business environment so when you talk about uh, intellectual property rights differing from other legal subjects intellectual property rights we always proudly say it's a subject legal subject which connects almost all walks of life for example when you wake up in the morning and brush your teeth with a toothpaste if you look at carefully you can understand that there is a trademark a name on the toothpaste for that and some of the toothpaste has patented contents in it nobody knows it but some of the toothpaste has patented contents in it the cover as a design a particular design has been adopted by them and you just take the paper you come across different issues connected with intellectual property rights the issues of increase in price with respect to cancer drugs due to the patenting scenario adopted by some of the pharma companies issues of farmers rights in respect of the varieties of plant varieties which is common but some new breeders try to take an advantage of by going for registration under plant varieties and protection of right plant varieties and protection of farmers rights act issues of copyright infringement when you take any newspaper you come across uh, at least one issue with regard to a movie is being based on uh, by violating a person's script or an online piracy largely we see every day of a newly released movie that is being done through different type of websites and illegally being shared and watched by different people in different parts of the world so ipr what i was trying to say that intellectual property rights is a very important a commercial interest that has been recognized by the by the state as it is 
so it is very important that we understand the the knowledge of uh, ipr actually it's very important for the sustenance as it is so let us go to the presentation as uh, What is intellectual property? Yes, uh, just in just common understanding of what is intellectual property, uh, we say that uh, as Sir was saying, that Trudy was saying that it is a you are giving a property right to the intellectual labor emanated from a creator to the society. So it can be of anything. It can be of a new story, a new movie, a new invention, or anything which is being created by a person. And that is being openly shared with the society. So you are a lot of intellectual labor is involved in that. And the society is being transferred and society is giving a property right to that intellectual labor. That is a very most important right because a granting a property right is very important when you identify that a property rights can be it's like a, almost like a, having a 10 cents of land or a, having a flat or something like that. I'm not saying exactly the same, but you get such a rights of it in such a manner that you can share, you can transfer, you can license, you can uh, bequeath to your uh, legal heirs, anything can be done on that property rights. So that identification, recognition of the property right to the intellectual labor is the most important aspect of intellectual property action. Generally, we identify these are the members of intellectual property rights family. One is copyrights. That is in, in brief manner, we can say that in connection with uh, creative works like literary works, one story may be there, a uh, picture, movie may can be made, artistic works, paintings, uh, sculptures, etc. Patents is in relation to inventions, a product or a process. An invention in the field of a product or process is being granted by a patent. Trademark is in relation to business goodwill and reputation. A mark which is being used to identify and connect with the particular producer that is a trademark. Design is an ornamentative, I mean, a uh, decoration done on a product to only for its appearance. Geographical indication is a kind of indication which is gives a kind of unique feature to that product because of its connection with the place of origin for example kanjivaram saris banaras saris all these things are being uh, get a reputation by identifying with that place semiconductor chip designs that is a design actually it's a new one which is being identified along with the arrangement of np pnp diodes in such a manner plan varieties that the new varieties of plants which is being identified they also can be protected by registration under the protection of plant varieties and farmers rights act so normally we identify these are the members of intellectual property rights family and one among thing which is not included is a trade secret trade secret also can be included because it is a kind of commercial secret which is being protected without any kind of revelation one of the example is coca-cola actually content of coca-cola also we can say that and what are the characteristic features of this intellectual properties? It's all intellectual properties are intangible. We study in commerce classes or economic classes, the difference between tangible and intangible. Tangible property means it can be touched and felt, but where in case of intangible, you cannot simply touch and felt. For example, I cannot show my right on copyright assets. I can show that, okay, this is a book on which, this is a book which is written by me and I enjoy a copyright on this book. That is the difference between intangible and tangible. Second one is it grants a monopoly for a limited period. Two aspects you need to understand. One is a monopoly. You are granting, you are being granted an exclusive right. That is being, we can say that a monopoly for a limited period. So that is the difference between when you compare with the normal real properties like land and buildings and when you compare with intellectual property rights. In the case of land and buildings, the rights are given for unlimited period. What I meant is that after you, you are dead, it can go to the your legal heirs and it can continue up to generations after generations. 
but in the case of intellectual property rights it's only for a period of limited period for example in the case of a copyright in the period of author's life plus 60 years so if you have written a book after your death your legal heirs can enjoy for a period of 60 years more in respect of the work written by or created by you in the case of patents it is for a period of 20 years of filing the application in the case of designs the period of 15 years from the date of filing the application and another question is another characteristic feature is that is it is though we say that they are all absolute rights but it is a kind of wherein we try to there is a limitation based on public interest public interest what i meant is that there is a, a when for example i like to say that uh, if you have published a book or if you are invented a drug and uh, you are charging exorbitant prices for the drug so it is not reasonably affordable to the public at large so the government can intervene and curb your right and grant a third party a right on that particular patent so what i wanted to say that there is it's even though this like with an absolute there is a limitation based on the public interest is there so why do we protect for uh, rational for ipr protection one is for incentive for innovation that is if we want to innovation is one of the prerequisite for the industrial growth as well as the growth of the society for example, we can compare the innovations which happen in our society for the last 20 years. The laptops, computers, internets, mobile phones. So it has changed the whole scenario of communication uh, area at all. So why does innovation takes place that unless there are new patent technologies coming in, you are being granted as some kind of monopoly for that. And a protection of investment. What I meant is that you are investing in a business. For example, research and development and all these things. If the outcome of the research and development is not being protected in a proper manner, people can easily copy and you, you cannot uh, find a return on your investment. So in order to have a protection of investment, you need to provide these kind of intellectual property rights. Another one is incentive for new lines of production. I just want to have a case study analysis on this point because if you look at the uh, 19th uh, beginning of the 20th century, uh, you can see that uh, biotechnology industry was at infancy. So there were a lot of uh, patent applications were filed in different parts of the world in US, Europe, in respect of uh, patenting of bacteria or life forms. And there were a lot of uh, legal as well as ethical challenges faced by these applications. So people say, that, can you claim a property right on life forms? Can you claim a property rights on bacteria? And then how do you, how do you prove the invention? It is already existing in the nature. So how do you prove, even though you segregate or you add some attributes to that bacteria, can you claim a novelty on patent and how can you grant a patent right on that? So there was a lot of discussions. There was a lot of conflicting decisions from patent offices of different parts of the world. What I was trying to say that one instance when in one Indian Anand Chakrabarti has invented a bacteria which can, uh, I mean, which sucks oil spills, oil from the wells, oil wells and can reproduce. So one of the important aspects was that it has a mutated bacteria which had a new characteristic feature of sucking that oil, oil from the oil spill site. So it was patent application was filed and uh, it was initially rejected finally after all this legal process it reached the u.s supreme court so that is one point when the legal question arose can you claim a copyright on sorry can you claim a patent on the uh, uh, on the life forms of bacteria that is on the one point at the simultaneous stage where you can see that the biotechnology industry was its infancy people were very reluctant to in I mean, invest in biotechnology industry because they were not assured of any return on that because there was no patents on the research and development and particularly those who are aware on the field of biotechnology industry knew that uh, the, 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 the uh, industry is basically a capital intensive one because the it's quite expensive the the technology is just quite expensive the machineries the lab the research the scientists everything is also quite expensive so unless you are assured of some kind of return, a reasonable return on your investment, people will be reluctant to 
uh, put money or invest into these kind of sectors. That is one. So what happened is that the, finally the patent uh, patentability of bacteria came before the U.S. Supreme Court. U.S. Supreme Court held that anything under the sun can be patented if it involves human intervention. Anything under the sun can be patented if it involves human intervention. So that was a major breakthrough in the field of patenting of biotechnological forms. This was adopted as a basis and in all other countries also, this biotechnological inventions were started given patenting. So it was a major, uh, uh, it was a major uh, change in the field of biotechnology industry and a lot of people started investing in the biotechnological field. So what I was trying to say that a new mode of uh, new line of production was only because a patent was granted, people started investing in these kind of uh, technologies and a lot of money was pouring in, the technology was some success. So that enables an industrial growth also. That is why when a technology comes into picture, we start an industry. So all ancillary industries coming to touch the I mean other connected things and there will be an industrial development taking place. And other thing is with regard to when you come to individual uh, property right, one is with regard to copyright. Copyright as you already know that it is in connection to literary works, dramatic works, musical works, artistic works, cinematical films and sound recordings. If you write a story, you get a copyright on this. You write a movie, sorry, you write a script. You make a painting, you take a photograph. So nobody have a right to reproduce that thing without your permission. Okay. So copyright is also an exclusive right given under the statute to authors of original literary, artistic, dramatic, musical works, cinematograph films and sound recordings. So that is right. So there are what are the principles of copyright? What are the things I can get a copyright on this? So the, mainly the criteria is with regard to originality. What do you mean by originality? The term originality does not require that kind of highest standards of creativity as we normally speak in the world of literature. Here, actually, the criteria is much lesser as the quality required is only two. It should originate from the author and it should not be a copied one. So important aspect is it should originate from the author and it should not be a copied one. This has been laid down by the UK court in the University of London Press versus University of Tutorial Press case, wherein the question was, can you claim copyright over the question papers? So the court said that even though the topic has been given to them, even though the earlier question papers has been given to them, the question paper setters actually put their intellectual labor and make a question papers. So that with regard to that question papers, they are entitled to copyright on this. And other point is that ideas are not protected, but only expressions are protected. What do you mean by that? Ideas are not protected. For example, we talk about ideas, a theme and a movie comes. You can see that we look into a different type of movies. You can some of them, you can see that the theme remains the same. But the expressions are different. For example, an inter-religious love marriage or an inter-caste love marriage and the problems are coming after that. You can see a lot of movies based on that concept and themes. But you don't get a copyright on the theme as it is because ideas should be remains in the public domain and as a building blocks for creating more and more new things. So ideas are not created but only expressions are protected. That's why you can see that, for example, one time period of time, around four movies was released based on the life of Bhagat Singh in Bollywood. So a lot of historical person, historical facts, a lot of people, different people. So you cannot claim, prevent other person from using that thing unless the expression has been copied. But when the ideas are remains, ideas are, cannot be protected under copyright at all. So other one is it should be fixed in a permanent form. That is in the Kailuru, I have an idea in my mind will not help you to enjoy a copyright. You should fix in some kind of form like recording or in writing or in printing or some manner. It should be in a fixed form that only you can enjoy the copyright. One of the important aspects of copyright is that no registration is necessary. 
for enjoying the copyright. But one point you should keep in mind is that the Copyright Act provides for a registration of materials under the Copyright Act. And that is provides a prima facie evidence of your ownership. So one of the important aspects is that if you may, you may feel it very simple, but prima facie evidence of your ownership is very important when practical issue of case comes into picture. For example, if I have, I have written something and I have got a registration under the Copyright Act in my hand, if anyone infringes or anyone tries to reproduce or copy my work, I can simply approach the court with a certificate and say, this is a document where which proves that I am the owner of the copyright and you, I want an injunction against other person. The court normally grants such an injunction. That is the importance of registration. And the period of protection is author's life plus 60 years. As I stated earlier, the period of protection is the, the limited period is the main point in which as when you talk about intellectual property, right? not an unlimited period. And the period of protection is author's life plus 60 years. And the types of works are literary works, artistic work, dramatic work, musical work, and cinematic films and sound recordings. That is a major work. Literary work include anything written including computer programs, anything written, it can be a story or an article or a newspaper, anything. It becomes a literary work. Artistic work means painting, sculpture, photograph, engraving, anything can be an artistic work. Musical work, musical compositions, dramatic work, any sequence of performance. Then cinematograph film is a film, you already know that. Sound recording is a recording of the sound, uh, uh, I mean, recording of the sound system as it is. And in the case of all the Literary work means a person who writes a dramatic works, who creates a drama. The musical work, a composer, artistic work, an artist. Everyone knows that whoever makes the things becomes an author. And photograph, who takes a photograph or sound recording and cinematographer who is a producer. That is a normal thing. You can just have a surprise because as far as Indian law is concerned, we don't have a statute of recognition for the role of directors as far as Copyright Act is concerned. The Honor of copyright in respect of cinematograph film is vested with the producer. And these are the rights available to a copyright owner or author. Reproduction right, distribution right, right to communicate to the public, adaptation right, translation right, right to make a cinematograph film. So what I was saying to say that take the exa example of J.K. Rowling, the, you all know the Harry Potter series. So J.K. Rowling, at one point of time, she was one of the richest women in the world. She never had any kind of industry. She did not run any business. And how did she become rich? Because she had all, she is having and having all these rights in respect of copyright for the works which she did. Harry Potter series, as you all know that it has been uh, made, published in English in different uh, part of the world. So we have a reproduction right has been transferred distribution right has been transferred to publishers, right to communicate to the public. The drama has been made and made in different parts of the world that is being transferred. Adaptation right. They add abridge. For example, Harry Potter's abridgments are available. The drama forms conversions are available. Translation right. It has been translated into different languages. Right to make a cinematograph film. It has been converted and movie has been made by this based on this. So that is also very important. So how do you uh, different types of rights vested with you transfer these rights and J.K. Rowling transfer these rights and uh, she became rich. So what I was trying to say that in this kind of situations, actually, these are the rights available actually. How can you transfer? It can be automatic transfer. How do you transfer? Assignment is complete transfer of your right. Licensing, you can license for a certain period actually. Automatic transfer, I was envisaging a situation where in which, for example, it is not practically possible. If you are working in a newspaper uh, journal or newspaper magazine company, every day it's not possible for a company to uh, enter into an assignment agreement or transfer of copyright or the works of editors. So in order to take the practical difficulties, you have a mechanism by which if you are working in the course of employment, every work done by them is becomes the copyright owner, the, the, actually the the publisher becomes the printing, the newspaper company becomes the owner of the copyright on that. And uh, that is with regard to different modes of transfer. And another new generation right is performance rights. Performance rights. What do you mean by performance? 
Indian Copyright Act is given a very wide definition of the performers, actually, because I am a performer, even though I'm giving you a lecture. Yesterday, I was just uh, joking with the, yeah, the Sajida teacher when she said that, sir, your, your uh, video will be recorded. I said, uh, you are not legally entitled to record my video without my permission because it is a violation of my performer's right. I'm doing a performance. When I take a class, I'm doing a performance. When you go for uh, like uh, dance performance of famous dancers like Shobana and all these things, sorry, all these artists, uh, you can say that normally they used to give an announcement prior to the program saying that recording or uh, video recording of or taking photography of these programs are absolutely prohibited because that's a violation of performers, right? So broadcast reproduction right where and which says that uh, when you have, for example, like cricket, uh, different type of games, one journal, one uh, channel gets a broadcasting right. Other channels cannot broadcast that right only after the expiry of 25 years because the broadcast reproduction right is expired. We have a civil remedies as well as criminal remedies. So we have a different type of rights. As I said, when one person write the reproduction right, distribution right, cinematograph film, all these rights are there. So when one right is violated, what is the remedy? You have to approach the civil remedy. Civil remedy means you can approach the court and seek for an injunction from for example, if you have written a book, as a person is going to publish a book, copying your work, you can seek the court from injuncting, from publishing that book, or your script has been taken away and made into a movie. So that is also possible that you can prevent from releasing and get a damages, etc. You can from the civil court. Criminal remedies are also possible. I can file a criminal complaint before the police, and it is punishable up to minimum of three years to maximum up to a period of seven years. The current punishment is also possible. The trademark is very simple. You just uh, move around from your day begin, as I said earlier, your toothpaste, your toothbrush, whatever you brands. Without brands, we cannot leave as it is. Your shirts, your pants, your uh, chappals, your footwear, your bag, your laptops, everything has some of the brands. So that is normally we used to have a trademark actually. It can be of name or color combinations, anything which connects a product to its origin or what I mean is that a product to from where it has come from. We believe, for example, we believe that when you purchase a Sony TV or Sony product, we believe that it has a good reputation, it has some kind of uh, good quality and uh, we believe we, we believe that is coming from that uh, a particular quality made in a mechanism that has got an enjoying goodwill. So that is the mainly purpose of trademark. So capable of distinguishing one product from that of another. There are a lot of examples nowadays. You could take any newspapers in relation to different type of products that become part of the trademark. Without trademark, no product is available as of now. <clears throat> this is an advice where in which, for example, if you want, nowadays people are becoming no more entrepreneurs. People are starting businesses. So. When you start a business, even you are a student, your parents or your cousins are starting a business. When, when you choose a name, you have to be very cautious because uh, choosing a name and after starting a business, when you are unknowingly, knowingly and unknowingly come to know that or the legal action comes against you from stopping or using that particular name, that will be a death warrant for your business. So in order to avoid such situations, what should be my trademark? What should be my, uh, how, what are the things should be noted while choosing a trademark? That's a very important aspect. So that's why I said, <clears throat> one is it should be distinctive. What do you mean by distinctive? Distinctive means the trademark should be able to distinguish one product as that of the another. So by hearing a trademark itself, you should be able to distinguish that this product is this and the other product is different. That is the main capacity. So how do you become your trademark distinctive? That is why we secondly say that when you choose a trademark, it should not be a generic word. What do you mean by generic word? Generic word means it's a word which is connected to a common word or it's a geographical name. For example, I cannot take a trademark on a Trishu. I cannot take a trademark on Ernakulam. I cannot take a trademark on Trikakara because there are generic names and geographical names and the quality or directly referring to the product. 
Okay, for example, I cannot take a trademark on bakery. I cannot take a trademark on cakes because it's not directly re directly referring to that particular product itself. So they are on generic names. So don't choose such generic terms actually. Preferably it should be an invented word. It's always advisable that you go for choosing for a new word. Invented word means a new word, a combination of words which actually have a distinctiveness, but it should not be a deceptively similar with an earlier registered trademark. That is also very important. So the fourth point is how do you understand that whether the trademark which I have chosen is not registered under the Trademarks Act 1999. There you need to uh, look into the, the, there is a cross program, there is a supporting, uh, I mean, uh, from the website of ipindia.nic.in, the Indian IP website, where in which you can search a trademark, whether it is registered or not. So it is always, not always, I say the 100% advisable that when you want to uh, take a trademark, always do a search or always concerned with a proper, a qualified, knowledgeable, legal person so that they can help you that whether this mark is registered or whether it, there's any problem with regard to the deceptive similarity. For example, even if it is not registered, what are the similar marks available in the database so that you can choose a mark which will be a distinctive one an inventive one and you can avoid all the headaches of infringement and allegations of uh, I mean violation of the other person's right in the future other things are very common actually should not be one hurting religious sentiments that is normally we can understand a mark should not be always be respect of mutual respect of religious hurt we should not choose a mark which is uh, for our connection with hurting religious sentiment and it should not be scandalous or obscene natures you should not uh, that is also not possible and there is another thing that emblems and names prevention of improper use act there are certain emblems and names which are being considered as part of the national uh, 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 property assets because ashok chakra the indian flag all these things you cannot choose as a trademark and another main principle is very important because it should not be deceptively similar with a well-known mark for example Earlier, we had a um, uh, uh, mechanism where in which you uh, have a um, in, uh, trademark. For example, if Bata is a trademark, we normally see in connection with footwares. Other person is using the word Bata in connection with footwares, only an infringement action can be taken under the Trademarks Act. But as of now, there are a lot of decisions has come into picture where in which if a well-known mark like uh, Bata or some similar marks like, for example, Sony or different well-known marks which we commonly see, if that kind of mark is being used in connection with a different products also, the court can pass an injunction order, the court can request to, the owner of the court, uh, trade, the trademark owner can post to request to legal actions. One of the examples, one of the landmark cases was with regard to Benza versus VIP. Where in which one happened is that Benz, as you all know that when you hear the word Benz itself, it is uh, a direct reference to the eloquence, luxury and technically brilliant cars, actually. So what happened is that VIP launched an underwear under the name VIP Benz. And uh, the, the, the cover of the VIP Benz carried a person standing wearing this underwear in a three-pointed star position directly resembling to the logo of Benz actually. So the court, when the case reached the court, the VIP argued that there's a totally different, uh, there is no connection between the products and there's a totally different products and there is no trademark infringement. But the court said that there is a principle of dilution when you are en enabling other person to use this well-known mark. That will affect the integrity of the mark and that will reduce the value of the mark. So that is not also possible. So what I was trying to say that when you choose a name, don't choose names which are very com very popular even in respect of other areas, totally unconnected products. That is also not possible actually. So these are the, when you, you have a trademark and if you have a registered trademark, your mark should be registered. And once it is registered, you one, another person is using a deceptively similar mark, you can file an infringement action before the court. That is, that I said, using a mark in the same or similar class, different class to take an undue advantage and using the advertisement, comparative advertisement, all amounts to infringement. 
Another thing is what are the defenses available? Particularly when you have a defense, it's very important because sometimes uh, even if your mark is not registered, sometimes we imagine that you have started a business in way back in 1980s and uh, uh, your mark is not registered. What happened is that if your mark is not registered, then uh, another person got registered in another part of India and coming to file a suit against you. Actually, you have been using much prior to them, but you don't have a registration. So that is very important. The Trademarks Act itself provides a defense for that, like honest concurrent user. I mean, using along with the other person without any malified intention of taking an undue advantage of that. And prior user, I am the prior user. And it has become the commercial practice. I am using that particular word. There are sort of there are certain commercial words which are very common and which is being used by one person. So how do you prove that? That is why I said, please have a clear documentation of the uses of your trademark. Like all keep all, I always advise my clients to keep a separate file for that. You need to keep, for example, if you're giving a license in the, which carries your trademark, please keep a copy of that. Any paper advertisements, please keep a copy of that. Any other forms of advertisements, please keep a copy of that. All things and your labels, brochures, everything can be, you can keep a copy of that. So in order to enable that any issue comes because we are being using from that particular thing. So that is the real things like that. And from the research point of view, this is the area where which is very important. That is called a patent. And patent is the most powerful monopoly in the whole family of intellectual property rights. What is a patent? Patent is what, as I said, it invests in an exclusive right, a monopoly granted to an inventor in respect of a product or process of an invention. So what is happening is that if I invented a product, I have two options. Either I can keep it a secret or I need to disclose to the public. The society wants that they let the knowledge come to society, I mean society at large and more and more research must take place in that invention. And uh, so society wants them to disclose so when a patentee fights a patent application, he wants to disclose that thing and he wants to disclose the invention to the society. And the society as large gives an exclusive right. It's called a patent actually. So what are the criteria of getting a patent? That's very, very important. Because patent is very high, having a high criteria and you need to have this criteria for getting a patent. What is important is that one is novelty. What do you mean by novelty? Your patent, your invention must not be prior published in any part of the world before filing of the patent application. Your invention must not be prior used much prior to this filing of patent application and your invention must not be prior claimed in any part of the patent application. And another one is that must be capable of industrial application. Your uh, invention must be utility, useful must be there. And another important point is that inventive step. So what is important is that I was, when you refer to the novelty part, you are having a responsibility to maintain the secrecy of the inventions. Once you make a research, and you are reaching at the finality of your research, you know that nobody has made such a research or nobody has invented such a product before. You should not prior publish it. You should not prior publish, I mean, use that. And you should, whenever you do, for example, when you do a test trial, you should ensure that you are entering into a confidentiality agreement with them. That is the point of protecting of novelty. And another point is with regard to inventory step. The, the invention should be non-obvious to the person skilled in the art. Once again, I will say the invention should be <clears throat> non-obvious to the person skilled in the art. So what do you mean by that? When you are doing an invention in the field of, uh, for example, electronics, your invention should be tested by electronic engineers. They will be tested whether such an invention is already there or not, or whether it is merely a workshop improvement. For example, in a very simple manner, when Thomas Alva Edison invented bulb, he knew that when not only he, he but other people, other uh, scientists knew that 
when electricity passes through a metal, electricity can be produced. But you should be able to identify a metal which can resist that heat. So Thomas Alva Edison came out with that metal called tungsten, which can resist that heat and produce light simultaneously. That was a major invention. It has enabled Thomas Alva Edison to get a patent by satisfying the inventive step. So these kind of inventions are not patentable, which are contrary to public order or morality, which cause serious prejudice to human, animal, or plant life. For example, I'm, I'm, I want a, pa a patent for a bomb, or I want a patent for something explosive, which is killing the human life, or plant life, or animal life, and such a matter, you won't get a patent for that. Or a discovery of a scientific principle or object. For example, E is equal to MC square e is a formula. You cannot get a patent over that formula. You can get a patent over a product or process used, made using that formula, but you cannot claim a copyright patent on that that particular formula itself. Mere modifications of an existing product. That's why he said, you just make a product and mere modification you do. Some kind of small, small modification you apply for a patent, you won't get that. Admixtures. Admixtures means that, for example, in our Ayurveda, the Shamula Arishtam, you have different type of uh, <coughs> things. And <clears throat> and you, when you uh, consume that, you mix different type of arishtams or in the case of treatment, you take a term, I mean, a tulsi or pepper for the treatment of cough and all these things. That are all mere admixes, you won't get a patent for that. And method of agriculture or horticulture, you adopt some kind of method. We have a method of uh, having agriculture twice in a year, thrice in a year, you adopt some kind of, that is not patentable. And methods of treatments, animals and human beings, that is also not patentable. Inventions not patentable are plants and animals other than microorganisms. So Indian law, and, as per Indian law, microorganisms are patentable. And items protected under copyright law, method of a mental gain, like monopoly, that is not patentable. Modification of traditional knowledge is also not patentable. Because you may come across different issues, like we may have about turmeric, turmeric is being patented, neem is being patented. So that is all which happened in the U.S. patent or not under the Indian law. Indian law specifically warrants that if your invention is based on a traditional knowledge, you won't be entitled to patent for that. We are just looking at the procedure. There are two types of patent. One is product patent and another one is process patent. Product patent is more powerful because as product patent grants you an exclusive right in respect of the product itself. Whereas process patent is not that much strong because process patent is only in respect of the process and another person can manufacture the same product through an another process. So that is why we have a product patent and process patent and specification is we have a proportional specification and complete specifications. What do you mean by specification? Specification is we call it as a description which detailedly say what is the patent when you file a patent application before the patent office. So why do you find the provisional specification is that for example you have started a research and uh, you have not just reached the finality of the invention but you have just got a blueprint of the invention but you require more time for that. But you have to apprehend that during that if I didn't find a patent other person may file, any other person may file a patent or that during that period. So then what is that body? You get a pro, can file a provisional application and within a period of 12 months, you can find the complete application. That is because it is a provisional application. And uh, uh, opposition is that once the application has been filed, it is normally after a period of 18 months, it is published in the patent journal. And patent journal is available to all. Anybody can access to the patent journal and see what are the areas connected with that. So I always advise that particularly researchers or science or uh, other people who are working on uh, research, it is always advisable to do a patent search before starting a research or uh, doing further research on this. Because doing a patent search will enable you to understand what are the areas of invention which has already been happened in that particular area of research. So if that is already being invented or that is already being invented or research has been done on that, there is no meaning in you repeating all the processes. 
so it enables you to identify something new or something which is more valuable than the earlier one so it is always when the patent application is published in the patent journal the other person can oppose saying that there is no it is not satisfy the criteria of getting a patent that is why we are opposing that that's called pre-grant opposition and post-grant because pre-grant is after uh, filing of the patent application within a period of 18 months you can file you can file the pre-grant opposition post-grant even if after granting a patent uh, uh, one year from the date of granting a patent is given in the post-grant patent application the patent application then goes to once it is accepted it is patent and the right is being granted then even can for revocation application revocation means even if a patent is being granted for example uh, uh, by the inadvertent mistake one of the patent office grants a patent towards uh, invention which is already becomes part of the being used in the same industry other person can apply for a revo revocation of patents so other one is pct applications what do you mean by PCT? Normally people will ask that there is a lot of questions comes. So can I ask uh, if I get a patent in India, can it, will it benefit for me in uh, using it in uh, US actually? The question is no. There is no such mechanism like international patent. If you are filing a patent application in India and you are being granted a patent right, your right is vested only with India, not in other part of the world. The same manner, if you're right, I'm filing a patent application in the US, your right is vested with the US and not in other part of the world. So there is no such mechanism called international patent actually. PCT is called a patent cooperation treaty, which enables you to file in different countries at the same time. But PCT is not a patent granting body as a person. This is normally we say it is a patent uh, process and all of you, how do you mean a system works actually. That is normally what happened is that in a marketing or sales guy point out that we need to have a development of this product. And uh, that is being suggested to the innovation process that they do R&D and they develop a product and go for an IP portfolio. And uh, uh, these are the, just getting a patent will not help you. We need to renew the patent fees. You know, to pay the patent renewal fees, enter into proper assignment and licensing agreement. I have got a patent, but that does not mean that I simply keep it the certificate in my hand. I will get a benefit. No, I will not get a benefit unless otherwise I convert into manufacture or if I am not able to manufacture, for example, certain inventions are possible. Only big company with large uh, capital will be able to manufacture. Then actually I need to enter into proper assignment and licensing agreement with proper royalty clauses. Majority of the failures in agreements is that people do not have uh, knowledge about this. You are entitled to royalties on if you are granting a patent licensing agreement. And develop it as an assent and take legal action against infringement. If an infringement any other person using a patent right without you have to take actions. Other one is design. Design is kind of any kind of ornamentation which you apply on an article. For example, the common example which we always say is a regard stabilizers. I don't know if new generation may be knowing about VGAR, but the stabilizers have a separate type of shapes, which enables them to have a understanding that this is distinctive in such a manner that this is VGAR actually. So it does not have any kind of function or something like that. It is only having an IF feel over the product. You can see a lot of design. For example, if you have a, in college or something like that, normally we have a lot of plastic chairs like Neil Kamel and all these things. Next time when you look at this chairs, please look at the back side of the chairs. You can say that there will be some kind of design protection, design registration done by them in respect to the design which they have used in respect of that particular chair. So this design can be a uh, two dimensional or three dimensional or any industrial process. It's an IF appeal and should not have any functions. It should not have any IF appeal. It should only have an IF appeal. It should not have any function. For example, aerodynamic shape of a car cannot be given a design protection because it have an a function on that but the beauty in other features if it's something like the shape provides it can become a design protection and registration is mandatory you need to have a design registration is compulsory for that and this is a design registration it should be new as in the case of patent also it should be new and original new or original it should not be prior published before in any part of the world and should contain scandalous or obscene matter <clears throat> Next, we talk about the new generation IP members like uh, 
semiconductor chip circuit designs. That is, I said, these are all being brought. Uh, uh, you all know that India became part of the World Trade Organization. And there was, there was a multilateral treaty called Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights, or it's commonly known as an acronym, TRIPS Agreement. We were all become part of the TRIPS Agreement. And TRIPS Agreement mandates that you should give, provide minimum protection, which is being mandated in the TRIPS Agreement, in all members of the WTO. That is why we all added these things, like Semiconductor Chip Circuit Design Protection Act, Protection of Geographic Indication Act, Protection of Plant Varieties and uh, Farmers Rights Act, and Trade Secret. So these things actually brought in by the arrival of World Trade Organization, and we have adopted, we have passed legislation tuned with the requirement as stated in the uh, uh, TRIPS Agreement. So we have a protection of semiconductor chip designs is that when you use the NPP, NP diode, that is being the particular protection is very rarely used in India. Geographical indications, as I said earlier, is an indication which is connected with the place of origin. Alipi coir. So many people say that Alipi coir, that coir is being manufactured in Alipi. And the registration is given to a group of individuals, not a single individual. A group of individuals who are um, actually this kind of, uh, they are commonly working towards a common goal with the product, they are being granted a, a protection. And new plan varieties, new varieties of plan varieties also given a protection on that. And trade secret is a secret, uh, in a common trade secret. For example, as we commonly say, the content of Coca-Cola, nobody knows what is the content of Coca-Cola or any other business information which is having a value. As, for example, your clientele information, your other things, anything which can be called as a trade secret site. So, when in combination of IPR, how do you use in a combination actually? So, it can be new products. When you come, for example, I am inventing, imagine that I will example like this. Imagine that I am inventing a drug for uh, uh, Corona. Then imagine that I have initially what I should I file a patent application in respect of the new drug. Then what I will do is that I will find a new name and I will provide a new trademark for that particular drug. That will be very good. Then I will start marketing and all. And the product with regard to the pills or whatever, maybe I will provide a new design so it becomes more attractive and uh, have a market penetration. And the wrapping materials and promotion materials are also provided with the copyright. So uh, you can concentrate in the creation of more IPR assets develop IPR strategies for knowledge management and create more awareness about IPR. So this is the thing. My attempt was to um, so my attempt here was to give a basic knowledge of intellectual property rights. What do you mean by patent? What do you mean by trademarks? What do you mean by designs? What are the legal aspects of it? What are the criteria for getting it? How do you protect it, etc. Now I think you can all uh, ask questions in respect of that or any area if you feel that something like more light should be uh, thrown on that you can ask for that also. Hello, any questions, comments from the participants? Thank you so much, Advocate Binoy Kekadagan. We understand that IPR is a very nuanced area. And uh, your presentation was an extensive one. And you covered um, you know, issues related to copyright, trademark, and patents. And actually, um, you quoted a lot of uh, real life examples. And we understand that we are all, in a way or the other, uh, IPR violators. Knowingly or unknowingly, we violate a lot of uh, IPR. Uh, you know, everyday life. In, in everyday life, we download photographs, we download uh, audio audio recordings from internet, and we use it in the class. So, uh, we uh, one thing that I can assure you right now is that we will be more careful. Like, we knew a lot about um, IPR violations, but uh, maybe we were not that much aware about ourselves as violators. So, I, I think. Uh, all the participants. Yeah, one, one point I need to clarify that I mean, particularly you are all students, researchers, academicians, and all these things. Uh, don't think that everything available in the internet is free and you are free to download. That is actually a, a, a wrong concept, actually. 
because recently we are I mean last two two to three years we are coming across a lot of legal issues not legal issues people uh, as you said knowingly or unknowingly as per one of the uh, ex there is no excuse for if you are doing it wrong in, I mean, ignorance of law is not an excuse that is a word which we normally say so these are all uh, legal wrongs and uh, you cannot i simply say that uh, even you watch the pirated movie because when i say that no what just wanted to share a thing because we work very closely with the uh, coming up uh, script writers i mean proved uh, script writers approved directors all these things so uh, i strongly enforce in myself and on the house and my friends that people do not uh, pirate the movies why because you should realize their pain involved in that. If you have any person connected with the movie in your, li in your life and family, you can watch that. You write a script, you go to a director, you find a producer. After all these things, sometimes it may not succeed. Then you find another script, then you go to a thing. So after a lot of attempts, actually, finally, a person's creativity comes on the screen. So you, I mean, the effort uh, that is being uh, putting on them, not only from the monetary value, but from the other angle, the intellectual effort, the coordination works done by a group of people are being simply ignored when you simply download and watch a pirated movie. Particularly nowadays, we have a lot of options wherein which you can watch at a very, I mean, comparatively less cost. So don't, I request all the students, all the members to that, don't adopt piracy because that will, uh, that will be a very bad it's like simply, for example, I said, will you go to the other person's property and take one, any other thing without his permission? No. So that in the same manner, copyright is also like a theft. Theft, no one, uh, it's like a theft actually. So imagine that when you download something which is not uh, your own, I mean, you are not legally authorized or you are legally permitted to do that. When you download, when you copy or when you share, when you things like that, it's a theft. It's a purely a theft. And it is a violation of law and we should not be a lawbreakers. We should be always be a law abiding citizen and we should develop that culture so that uh, that rights of everyone is respected and we can have a mechanism for that also. That's all. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Audible. Uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, thank you very much for your uh, very excellent and very informative talk on uh, IPR. Actually, in Calicut University, uh, we are going for the NAC accreditation. As a part of the NAC accreditation, we are preparing a policy document on uh, uh, publication and uh, patent and uh, all these things. So, exactly. while we are facing, as our, um, our idea is uh, all the public funded research and their output, including the raw data, should be the uh, property of the Calicut University and the uh, public. But uh, exactly. while publishing, while sending to the journals, they ask the copyright. Exactly. So what should we do in, in this situation? Actually, the university uh, wants, uh, that is the university needs the copyright uh, for the university, but the publishers ask uh, copyright to the publisher for the journal publisher okay how, so, how no, this sir, can be tackled you uh, you can actually provide a limited right for publishing only you know because i said that no the copyright can be fragmented into any portions hmm. for example uh, for example i write an article there was an issue which happened is that i write an article and not i just said that there was an issue which happened is in one economist writing or wrote an article in way back in last depression time in 1970s it was published in uh, Economic Times way back. So what happened is that recently there was a, I mean, we have written five years back, there was an apprehension of a depression came. That article was republished by the magazine, the Economic Times, and there was the author challenged it. So when I sent an article for publication in the, uh, in the journal, it can be very specific that only for the publication that manner, no further copyright can be, need not be transferred. What I mean is that you can have the only for the publication in this particular journal and only for this time only. No further publication is allowed. So you can classify the copyright. What I wanted to say that, for example, uh, I mean, uh, the, the licensing or assignment can be can be divided into different things. For example, I can uh, 
I say that okay, I can only give this particular publication right only once to this particular journal. So what happens is that all other right vested with you. You can whatever you do want with the material in your hand. Sir, uh, one more thing. As per the uh, government of India uh, direction, all the theses should be submitted to a repository. That is the repository of. Sir, the I think you are not audible. Uh, is it audible now? Okay, na. Hello. Hello. Is it audible? Yes, please. Okay. okay. As per the uh, UGC direction, my audible, sir. Yeah, I can, now I can hear, please. Uh, as per the uh, UGC direction, all the theses in uh, universities in India should be submitted or posted in a repository, Shodh Ganga. Okay. Yes. So, that case also it is available as open access, freely access. So, that will yes. also create the same uh, research papers based on these theses published by a journal, for example, Science Director, Nature, etc. But the original thesis is available for open access by this uh, policy. Okay. No, so no, no actually, case, this what what is the thing is that uh, when the university has a policy to provide this all thing uh, dissertations or thesis on their website or the depository, that that I uh, what I wanted to say that that does not allow a person to simply download. They can read for the personal use. There is no problem. That is the objective of the university. Any other person who is doing a research or because we advise ND University in that aspect, we advise the patent uh, and IP policy in the university. So we framed an IPR policy for the MD University. What we advise is that when we allow that, okay, fine, they provide them the depository, but that does not mean that anybody can simply download and republish and that is not possible. That is a violation of copyright. That is, I said, only because it is available in the net. That does not mean that I can simply download and do whatever it may be. That is not possible. That is only provided that, okay, I can read. For example, I am working on an electronic field or I am, for example, I am working on legal. I am an IPR. So I can, I have different access to different uh, legal journals so that to update my knowledge on the library, even QSAT. When I was studying in QSAT, also we have a good depository of IPR journals. So that does not mean that I can simply cut and copy from that journals and uh, I can republish. That is not possible. That is only for sharing of information aspect. That is only for but, a private academic use. Actually, but it is uh, freely available there. The, the full thesis is uh, freely available in the repository, national repository. Yeah, yeah, that is. Otherwise, you need to change. I mean, uh, what I mean is that freely available in the depository does not. That is why I said freely available in the depository does not make that other person have a right to copy. It. No. Okay. Perfect. Freely available that only was the objective is to for that, for example, a person doing a research can have access to that materials, read the contents and understand what it is. Yes, that is the thing. Or otherwise, I mean, then the university need to plan in other words that, okay, you can have a, I mean, a cap. For example, uh, that is not normally in the academic field, India does not adopt such a policy. For example, you can have a review of some of the things. If you want to read further, you need to pay. Actually, that is one kind of... Uh, the things may change because mm -hmm. when the education in institutions are, for example, these autonomous institutions or other colleges are going to be, they have to be self-sufficient one day. So what yes, they need yeah. to universities also need to, okay, okay, we will provide an access, but after that, for example, one person want to read fully, you need to pay everything. And we, uh, that kind of mechanism, sometimes we may, that may come, that may have to come. Then only university has to generate fund for that. Otherwise, yes. universities cannot sustain only on the government funds in the future. Yes. Any other questions uh, from the participants? Dear participants, if you have questions, please feel free to raise it to the resource board. You can free and Malayalam. You can It's not necessary that English is not free. You can free and Malayalam. I simply uh, spoke in English. You can ask any questions in English. You can ask any questions in Malayalam also. I am conversant in Malayalam also. So, no, don't worry about that. You can be free because I am a visiting faculty with National University of Advanced Legal Studies, Kochi. So, I know the trend of students. You can be free like uh, as a teacher, not as a lawyer in the sense. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Okay, okay, sir. I am Francis, a librarian. 
Price College. Oh, very good. Please. Uh, sir, uh, what about the uh, uh, researches uh, done by the public funds? ഗവൺമെന്റ് <laughs> ആ പേറ്റൻ്റ് ആണെങ്കിൽ ഇഫ് എ ഗ്രാൻഡഡ് എ പേറ്റൻ്റ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി വിൽ ബി ദി ആപ്ലിക്കൻറ്റ് ഓർ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി വിൽ ബി ദി ഓണർ ഓഫ് ദ പേറ്റൻ്റ് ബട്ട് ദി റിസർച്ചേഴ്സ് വിൽ ബി ഐഡൻറ്റിഫൈഡ് ആസ് ഇൻവെൻറ്റർ പിന്നെ അവർക്കൊരു മെക്കാനിസം അഡോപ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യാം ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഇഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഗോസ് കൊമേഴ്ഷ്യലൈസേഷൻ ഇപ്പം അതൊരു പ്രോഡക്റ്റ് ആയിട്ട് കൊമേഴ്ഷ്യലൈസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുവാണെങ്കിൽ ഹൗ ഡ ദ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ആൻഡ് റിസർച്ചേഴ്സ് ക്യാൻ ഷെയർ ദ ബെനിഫിറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ബി ഡിസൈഡ് എമങ് ദംസ് അതിനകത്ത് പ്രശ്നമൊന്നുമില്ല ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഓൾ പബ്ലിക് ഫണ്ട്സ് ആയിട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നവർക്ക് ദാറ്റ് വിൽ നോട്ട് ഗോ ഫോർ എ പബ്ലിക് ഡൊമൈൻ അതിലേക്ക് പോകത്തില്ല ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഗവൺമെന്റ് വർക്ക് ആണെന്ന് വെച്ചോ the copyright act we have a section called government work government okay. becomes the owner of all copyrights on that so okay. that a government works in a endekilum idu venam nadengile government de permission venam sherikum legally speaking okay 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 thank you sir sir nya sajida ലൈബ്രറി സയൻസ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ആണ് ഇൻഫർമേഷന്റെ ഫെയർ യൂസ് പോളിസിയെ കുറിച്ചിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞില്ല ഓക്കെ നമ്മള് ഇപ്പോ ഫെയർ യൂസ് കോപ്പിറൈറ്റിന്റെ ഫെയർ യൂസ് പോളിസി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞല്ലോ ട്രൈങ് ടു ബാലൻസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദി ക്രിയേറ്റേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് യൂസേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ദി മെറ്റീരിയൽസ് വാട്ട് ഔട്ട് മേ സോ ഫെയർ യൂസ് പ്രൊഫഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് നമ്മൾ എങ്ങനെ നമുക്ക് യൂസ് ചെയ്യാം ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ കാൻ ഐ ടേക്ക് എ ഫോട്ടോ കോപ്പി ഓഫ് ദി റിസർച്ച് മെറ്റീരിയൽ അതാണ് കുറച്ച് ഫസ്റ്റ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ നോർമലി നമ്മൾ അക്കാഡമിക് സൈഡിലൊക്കെ ഇഷ്ടംപോലെ ഫോട്ടോ കോപ്പീസ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യും നമ്മളത് ചെയ്യും അങ്ങനെ ചെയ്യാം പക്ഷേ വാട്ട് യു മീൻ ബൈ ദാറ്റ് ഈ സ്പെയർ യൂസ് പ്രൊവിഷൻസ് അലൗസ് എ പേഴ്സൺ ടു ടേക്ക് ഫോട്ടോ കോപ്പി ഫോർ എസ് പേഴ്സണൽ ആൻഡ് പ്രൈവറ്റ് യൂസ് നോട്ട് ഫോർ എ പർപ്പസ് ഓഫ് കൊമേഴ്ഷ്യൽ യൂസ് എനിക്ക് ഫോട്ടോ കോപ്പി എടുത്ത് എൻ്റെ പ്രൈവറ്റ് യൂസിനും പേഴ്സണൽ യൂസിനും കീപ്പ് ചെയ്യാം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഐ ക്യാൻ കോപ്പി എ പേഴ്സൺസ് വർക്ക് ഫോർ എ ക്രിറ്റിസം ഓർ റിവ്യൂ നമ്മൾ നോർമലി പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഒരു ജേണൽ എടുത്തു കഴിയുമ്പോൾ എനിക്ക് ആ ജേണലിൻ്റെ ഒരു അപ്രോച്ച് ഇപ്പം സിമ്പിൾ എക്സാമ്പിൾ വൺ ഓഫ് ദി കേസസ് വാസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ ഒരു നിങ്ങൾ എന്നെ കമ്മ്യൂണിസ്റ്റ് ആക്കി നിങ്ങൾ ആരെ കമ്മ്യൂണിസ്റ്റ് ആക്കി തോപ്പിൽ ബാസിയുടെ ഒരു വൈഫ് ഫയൽ ചെയ്തൊരു കേസ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ആക്ച്വലി നിങ്ങൾ എന്നെ കമ്മ്യൂണിസ്റ്റ് ആക്കി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ സിവിക് ചന്ദ്രൻ വേഴ്സസ് അമണിയമ്മ സിവിക് ചന്ദ്രൻ യൂണ് തോപ്പിൾ ബാസി റോഡ് ദി ഡ്രാമ നിങ്ങൾ എന്നെ കമ്മ്യൂണിസ്റ്റ് ആക്കി സോ Uh, after that ningal ene communist aki was a drama which trying to highlight the i mean what are the values and why communism should come into the society that was a point which was highlighted in the drama ningal ene communist aki so what has happened is that sibik chandran wrote another drama ningal are communist aki which actually used some of the dialogues from the original drama ningal ene communist aki but it was a kind of critic of the first drama what was the ideals which was uh, professed and which was not able to achieve why it wasn't able to achieve angle or critical angle and civic chandran wrote that drama actually. so other was a copyright case was filed by the topil basis wife but the court held that when the objective is for a criticism or review you can copy to a limited extent not for a larger extent a limited that is also permitted so that is a, for example in library also you can keep uh, up to three copies if the work is not available so the kind of limited things are available provided in the fair use provisions and uh, so fair uh, is a oro countries in oro fair dealing oro different concept and connecting with the name our nature of for example for our festivals for college programs like we are using the film songs all normally i mean you need to pay royalty and use that for sure we have exempted that it is a fair use portion which enable our culture and bagamite these parts and aspects all are we are providing so normally angana uh, fair use is a wide range of three situations parnu pon normally idana the idu concept even though the action amounts to copyright infringement but take into consideration the social requirements it is being treated as a fair use and we does not treat it as an infringement it is being allowed for the people to use that that is basically fair use means sex yes 
yes good morning please mr the pere pindu yan oru doubt doubt kekkan vendi irukkana ana ore pere thanne ulla rendu pusthakangal arakkumbo aa pere nende endum question illu ah exactly very good ore pere ulla rendu pusthakangal arakkumbo alle adhe okay okay rendu nu kandu pusthakam irikkum rendu rendu other aayirikkum content vyathas aayirikkum content vyathas वकीलमेंगे ഇപ്പോൾ നിങ്ങൾ ഒരു 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 ബുക്ക് നിങ്ങൾ വർഷങ്ങളായിട്ട് ആ ബുക്ക് അതിൻ്റെ ഒരു സീരീസ് പോലെ പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുക എന്ന് വെച്ചു ഓക്കെ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ നമ്മളിപ്പോൾ ഒരു ഒരു കേസ് വന്നു വെച്ചാൽ ശബ്ദ താരാവലി ഓക്കെ ശബ്ദ താരാവലി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞൊരു ബുക്ക് അത് വർഷങ്ങളായിട്ട് നമ്മൾ കൊണ്ട് ഇപ്പം ഞാൻ നാളെ ഒരു ശബ്ദ താരാവലി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ ബുക്ക് ഇറക്കുമ്പോൾ അത് പതുക്കെ അവർ ഇപ്പോൾ ലീഗൽ ഇതുള്ള ആൾക്കാരാണെങ്കിൽ അവർ പതുക്കെ അതിനകത്ത് ട്രേഡ് മാർക്ക് കൂടെ കൊണ്ടുവന്നിട്ട് പറയും ഇത് എൻ്റെ ബുക്കിന് കിട്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള റെപ്യൂട്ടേഷൻ അടിച്ചെടുക്കാനുള്ള ശ്രമമാണ് അതുകൊണ്ട് എൻ്റെ ബുക്കിൻ്റെ പേര് അഡോപ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റത്തില്ല എന്ന് പറയുന്നു കേസ് കൊടുക്കാൻ സാധ്യതയാണ് അല്ലാത്ത പക്ഷം ഒരു ബുക്കിൻ്റെ പേര് രണ്ടും സെയിം ആയതുകൊണ്ട് അതിൻ്റെ കണ്ടന്റ് വേറെ ആണ് ഓതേഴ്സ് വേറെ ആണെങ്കിൽ വേറെ നിയമ നടപടിക്ക് സാധ്യതയൊന്നുമില്ല മാതൃഭൂമി ബുക്ക് പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്തിട്ട് അവരതിൽ നിന്ന് വാങ്ങി പൈസ വാങ്ങിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അപ്പൊ അങ്ങനെ ചില രണ്ടു മൂന്ന് പുസ്തകങ്ങൾ ഞാൻ ശ്രദ്ധിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് കോപ്പി ലെഫ്റ്റ് ആയിരിക്കും പക്ഷെ അത് പബ്ലിഷേഴ്സ് അതിന്റെ കവറൊക്കെ ചെയ്ത് നല്ല ക്വാളിറ്റി ആയിട്ട് പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പൊ അത് ഏത് സ്കീമിലാണ് ഇതിൽ വരുന്നത് ാണ് <laughs> 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 അവരത് ആ കോപ്പി റൈറ്റ് അവർക്ക് വേണ്ട എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ റിലിങ്ക്യൂസ് ചെയ്തുമ്പോഴല്ലേ കോപ്പി ലെഫ്റ്റിലേക്ക് വരാതെ ആക്ച്വലി ഞാൻ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മളിപ്പോ കോപ്പി റൈറ്റ് ഞാൻ വേണ്ട എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ റിലിങ്ക്യൂസ് ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ബിക്കം പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് പബ്ലിക് ഡൊമൈൻ ആർക്ക് വേണേലും ഇത് ചെയ്യാം പക്ഷെ അത് ആ റിലിങ്ക്യൂസ്മെന്റ് എത്രമാത്രം കറക്റ്റ് ആണോ നോക്കുക അതാണ് ശരിക്കും നോക്കേണ്ട ഒരു പോയിന്റ് നമ്മുടെ ഇന്ത്യൻ ലോ അനുസരിച്ച് കറക്റ്റ് ആയിട്ട് ഒരു പ്രൊസീജിയർ ഒക്കെ ഉണ്ട് നാളെ അപ്പൊ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ പല ഇഷ്യൂസിലും വരുന്നതെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഇപ്പം ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഫാദർ ചിലപ്പോൾ റിലിങ്ക്യൂസ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടാവും ഓക്കെ ഓദർ ഞാൻ ഓദർ റിലിങ്ക്യൂസ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടാവും ചിലപ്പോൾ ഓദർ മരിച്ചു കഴിയുമ്പോഴായിരിക്കും ഈ ബുക്ക് ലൈം ലൈറ്റിലേക്കൊക്കെ വരിക പക്ഷെ ഈ റിലിങ്ക്യൂസ് ചെയ്ത് മെത്തേഡൊന്നും കറക്റ്റ് ആയില്ലെങ്കിൽ ചിലപ്പോൾ മക്കൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന അതൊന്നും റിലിങ്ക്യൂസ്മെന്റ് അല്ല അതുകൊണ്ട് വീൽ ഗെറ്റ് റൈറ്റ്സ് എന്നുള്ള ക്വസ്റ്റൻ ഒക്കെ വരാറുണ്ട് ലീഗൽ ഇഷ്യൂസ് അപ്പൊ ആ പഴയ പബ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ഒക്കെ പ്രശ്നമായിട്ട് വരും അതെ അതെ എക്സാക്ട്ലി എക്സാക്ട്ലി താങ്ക്യൂ സർ ഓക്കെ Uh, Ms. Sabina has raised her hand, so if she has any questions, she can pose it now. Okay, maybe it was done in an accident. Um, are there any other questions from the participants? I hope there are no more questions from the participants. So thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Advocate Binoy, and thanks to all the participants. And uh, now, uh, sorry, there is a question in the chat box. I'll read it out for you, sir. Sir, the session was good. Is there any copyright regarding business logos? And uh, there is one more doubt. I have uh, seen warnings like this video will be partially muted in some countries while posting videos on social media. 
why uh, is it said like some countries i will be taking this aspect seriously from now onwards uh, one question is business logos are not coming under copyright act you can register under the trademarks act trademarks that is being covered under trademark where in which all business logos names uh, symbols connection with the business are being protected under the trademarks act that is one question second question is with regard to the 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 video is muted in some countries for example that may not be fully based on the copyright content itself some countries something may be socially not acceptable so some countries will not be able to view that video in such a manner so that be particularly muted in that countries act so that is why i think that apart from the copyright angle uh, viewing is for example i am putting uh, uh, in the sense that if available in the social content i am a legally available copy there is no problem in viewing that i am said this specifically repeating that legally available copy for example you are posting something in the facebook i can access to that i can read that i can there is no problem with regard to that but uh, that is not possible but when you, i think that that limitation comes into when other laws comes into picture like something like uh, socially i mean there is against objective content is there or uh, legally objecting some of the parts like for example uh, i mean in the other content like uh, against child child children's uh, rights or other things uh, that cannot be permitted that countries they will mute normally in the other countries that is why i said whatever it may be the be cautious when you watch videos or when you share when you download ensure that this is a legally valid copy that's very important because nowadays uh, people even the photographs people simply even many people clients comes to us saying that no sir that was available i just downloaded and used in other products actually that's very interesting particularly when you do some dtp works there are a lot of funny elements which comes into a picture uh way what uh, interesting one that one uh, uh, interesting i just remember one fact where in which uh, one famous models picture was used uh, I, i was i cannot reveal the names the victim famous model was picture was used in connection with the local very small textile shops in connection with the temple and uh, in a temple uh, i mean the anniversary what to say that brochure i was quite surprised how did the models public uh, pr came to know about it and they were served with a notice for damages up to amount of 5 crores <laughs> so finally i mean they we, we were able to escape from the saying that we are did it unknowingly and uh, the volume was very less but we watch put in a download when you use a photo videos and it's a uh, legally available copy otherwise you may run up in trouble because people are all uh, having awareness about these kind of uh, copyright and everything their rights are all people are knowing about so they may come in not like uh, earlier period so be cautious about that also thank you sir i hope varna's question is answered well uh, so one more question from anuvind uh, sir i heard a term prayer art in an article which is related to potency could you please make a clarity on it yeah prior art means uh, what is the existing level of technology so uh, what is normally prior art is a, a standard which we compare when you uh, with the invention is novel or it satisfies the uh, inventive step that is why i said so nammal ipo already all existing technology aanu nammal prior art nu parayam adinekalum edu padiyilana the other one new one is more or new one is satisfying the inventive step new one is more novel adu vechittana nammal eppolum criteria compare cheyyanu so prior art means simple language it's existing technology that is means other existing art technology kana nammal prior art nu parayam so normally we say that novelty means an invention which does not form part of the prior art the prior art in the bagam ay kanya it will not satisfy novelty or inventive step it should be something above the prior art it should be something more than the prior art adinaanu nammal prior art nu vannu paraya thank you sir okay let us uh, wind up now ആർട്ടിക്കിൾ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആ റിസർച്ച് റിപ്പോർട്ടിന്റെ പാറ്റേൺ അദ്ദേഹത്തിനായിരിക്കുമ്പോ തന്
ഈ ബൾക്കായിട്ട് വരുന്ന ഡാറ്റ ഉണ്ടല്ലോ അതിപ്പോ ഏതെങ്കിലും ഒരു ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഫണ്ടോട് കൂടിയായിട്ടാണ് ആ ഡാറ്റ ചെയ്യുന്നെങ്കിൽ ആ ആ ബിഗ് ഡാറ്റ റിസർച്ച് ഡാറ്റയെ മറ്റു രീതിയിൽ ഉപയോഗിക്കാനായിട്ട് മറ്റ് ഏതെങ്കിലും സ്റ്റഡിക്ക് ഉപയോഗിക്കാൻ സാധിക്കുമോ അതിനകത്തൊരു ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഇപ്പോൾ ഡാറ്റ ആസെറ്റ് നമ്മളിപ്പോൾ ഒരു ഡാറ്റ ആസെറ്റ് എടുത്തു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഇപ്പോൾ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഐ മീൻ ദറ്റ് വാട്ട് ഓർ മേ ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ ഓർ ഡാറ്റ ആസെറ്റ് നമ്മൾ പ്രൊട്ടക്റ്റബിൾ അല്ല ഓക്കെ ഞാൻ ഉദ്ദേശിച്ചെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മളൊരു ആർട്ടിക്കിൾ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഇന്ന് നടന്നൊരു സ്റ്റഡി പിന്നെ നയൻറ്റീൻ സെവൻറ്റീസിൽ നടന്നൊരു സ്റ്റഡിയിൽ നമ്മൾ കുറേ ഡാറ്റ പ്രൊവൈഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നു അപ്പോൾ ആ ഒരു പ്രൊവൈഡിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ക്രിമിനൽ ടെൻഡൻസി ഓഫ് പീപ്പിൾ അത് വാട്ട് ഓർ മേ ബി ഒരു ഒരു സ്റ്റഡി പ്രൊവൈഡ് ചെയ്യും നമ്മൾ ആ ഡാറ്റ എടുക്കുന്നു ആ ഡാറ്റ മാത്രം വാട്ട് ഐ മീൻ ഇസ് ദറ്റ് ഐ ആം നോട്ട് ഗോയിങ് ടു ദി അതർ പാരസോണലി ഓഫ് ദറ്റ് ആർട്ടിക്കൾ ഓർ അതർ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ഓഫ് ദറ്റ് ആർട്ടിക്കൾ ഐ സിംപ്ലി ടേക്ക് ദറ്റ് ഡാറ്റ ആൻഡ് യൂസ് ആസ് എ കമ്പാരിറ്റീവ് അനാലിസിസ് ഫോർ ഫർദർ റിസർച്ച് ഇൻ മൈ റിസർച്ച് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് പെർമിസിബിൾ ഓക്കെ അപ്പോൾ അതായത് കൊണ്ട് ഇപ്പോൾ ഗവൺമെൻറ് ഫണ്ടഡ് ആയത് കൊണ്ട് നമ്മൾ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഏതെങ്കിലും രീതിയിൽ ഡാറ്റ ഈസ് ഓൾവേസ് ഓപ്പൺ ടു ഓൾ ഡാറ്റ ഒരാളുടെ മാത്രം എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു ഡാറ്റ പ്രൊട്ടക്ഷനിലേക്ക് നമ്മുടെ രാജ്യം പോയിട്ടില്ല വേറെ വി ആർ നോട്ട് ഗോൺ ടു സച്ച് എ ലെവൽ നോട്ട് ഓൺലി ഇന്ത്യ അത് വേറെ ഒരു പ്രൈവറ്റ് ഡാറ്റ പക്ഷേ അല്ലാത്ത സ്റ്റേജിലാണെങ്കിലും നമ്മൾ ആസ് എച്ച് ബി ഓഫ് നോ വി ഡോൺ ഹാവ് എ പ്രൊട്ടക്ഷൻ ഫോർ ഡാറ്റ ആസെറ്റ് ഞാൻ വളരെ സ്പെസിഫിക് ആയിട്ട് പറയുന്നത് വെച്ചാൽ യു ഷുഡ് ബി ഏബിൾ ടു ഡിഫറൻഷിയേറ്റ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദ ഡാറ്റ ആൻഡ് ദി എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ വാട്ട് മീൻ ബൈ ദാറ്റ് സബ്സ്റ്റാൻഷ്യൽ കോപ്പി ഓഫ് ദി ആർട്ടിക്കൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഇറ്റ് ഡസ് നോട്ട് ലിമിറ്റ് ടു ഡാറ്റ ഇലോ ഞാൻ ഇതിനകത്ത് കുറച്ച് ഡാറ്റ എടുത്തിട്ട് ഒരു കമ്പാരിറ്റീവ് സ്റ്റഡിക്ക് ഇപ്പുറത്ത് യൂസ് ചെയ്തെന്ന് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് പെർമിസിബിൾ ആക്ച്വലി ദർ ഇസ് നോ പ്രോബ്ലം വിത്ത് റിഗാർഡ് ടു ഡാറ്റ ഓക്കെ സാർ ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ സാർ അബദർ എനി മോർ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ഫോർ ദി പാർട്ടിസിപ്പൻസ് നമ്മൾ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ വൈൻഡ് അപ്പ് ചെയ്യാം അല്ലേ ഓക്കെ ദെൻ വി ഷാൽ വൈൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് അപ് സർ so once again thanks to all the participants for your questions and a big thanks to advocate vinoy for taking all the pains to answer each and every question very engagingly uh, i would like to uh, invite ms uh, nimida k faculty department of library and information science christ college autonomous irinalakuda to propose the vote uh, formal vote of thanks good morning all it is my privilege to express our thanks to all who are associated with the today's program first of all i would like to express our gratitude to our research, resource person advocate binoy sir you gave us an ex- excellent presentation and thus made the webinar interesting and meaningful thank you sir for spending your time with us thank you sir next i would like to thank our principal reverend father dr jolly andrews for his words of encouragement thank you father next i would like to thank dr hanif sir for being uh, being with us and for delivering the keynote address thank you sir thank you next i would like to thanks to the head of uh, head of various departments and the faculty for their valu- valuable contribution greatness and encouragement in all all our efforts thank you all i on behalf of the department of library and information science christ college as well as the department of library and information science university of calicut they extend our gratitude to the participants for your cooperation in making this session fruitful once again I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Binoy sir, for your uh, very informative you. talk. Uh, actually, we need your assistance uh, for framing the publication policy of Calicut University. I will contact yes, you, sir. Yeah, please, 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 please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you all. Uh, we have come to the end of today's session on IPR. from the organizers part i extend our heartfelt gratitude to all those who have been behind us while organizing the webinar and thanks also to uh, all those who made it to today's session thank you all we have come to the end you may all leave thank you rena